What's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR. So in this video, I'm going to give you my impressions for the Back for Blood beta. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background and my thoughts on the game and then get into uh, some finer details about the game itself. So for a little bit of background, right? I actually enjoy this game, surprisingly, and I say surprisingly because anybody who knows me knows I typically don't enjoy the whole co-op zombie horde shooter you know game and genre right and the reason i usually don't enjoy them is because i feel like this genre relies too much on the fun factor coming from playing with your friends in co-op rather than actually making the game itself fun right and but i do enjoy this game i did enjoy the beta and the reason i think I enjoy this beta not because uh, Back for Blood rises above all the other, all the issues that games in this genre usually suffer from. It definitely still suffers from uh, you know a good amount of those issues. But for me, when it comes down to shooters in general, I think the most important thing for me that decides if I'm gonna like a like a shooter or not is the guns, and specifically how the guns feel. The gun feedback, the gun sound design, and how enemies react when they are shot. If I do not get this feeling of gratification and satisfaction when I shoot the gun and when I shoot enemies, then I don't care how good the game looks, you know, how popular it is. Of course, I don't care how popular it is. I don't care about nothing else if the guns don't feel good to me. And I will say in Back for Blood, I enjoy shooting these guns, right? So I think that's what I'm really enjoying more than actually shooting a whole bunch of zombies. Cause let's be real, right? By the time you get to your, you know, your thousandth zombie, you're, you know, the, the feeling of enjoyment kind of wears off. It, it, it kind of, you know, it dissolves over time, right? So that's not really what you're playing the game for, I, I, I think. Because, like I said, eventually that that feeling kind of, you know, it, it kind of wears on you, right? So, Back for Blood, as I said, it's a four-player co-op zombie horde shooter by Total Rock Studios. Total Rock Studios, in the past, you know, has worked on uh, Evolve, and they, uh, they also have a bunch of developers in that studio that worked on the original Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. And Left 4 Dead is an example of a game that everybody loved and it was extremely popular and I thought it was boring, you know, uh, you know, uh, not, you know, not getting at nobody who enjoyed Left 4 Dead. You know, I just didn't see the hype in it. I didn't see why everybody loved it so much. It was extremely boring to me. And it, and once again, it could go back. It, it probably goes back to the fact that I just did not enjoy the shooting. I felt the shooting felt empty. It felt like I was shoot. I might as well be, have been shooting at like wooden uh, target practice. You know, that, that's or shooting it just, you know, it, it just felt empty to me, right? To, to, to pretty much summarize that. Um, so, yeah, this is made by Turtle Rock Studios. Uh, the game runs really well, let me say that, and it has pretty good graphical settings um, and options, right? And the concept of the game is pretty much the same as Left 4 Dead. It's the same uh, as it is in most uh, horde shooters. You got to get from point A to point B, and the zombie horde is in the middle of that. That's pretty much what it what it boils down to, right? The the characters in the game do have some unique attributes. Some may have higher defense. Some may have uh, better melee damage. Things like that. Corruption cards are modifiers that make each level in the game a little bit more difficult. For example, I don't know, enemies may move faster or do a, do some more damage. And I believe these uh, corruption cards do stack and stay uh, from level to level. I'm not exactly sure about that. But, you know, corruption cards are just to give you a higher challenge. And they're, they seem to be kind of random. Uh, overall, you get three continues. So if your squad does get wiped out, you get three continues. And after those three continues are done, then you have to restart at the very first act at the very first level, right? On top of 
the corruption cards, there are also active cards which act as stat buffs. So you get to choose one every time you're entering a level, and I believe those also stack. So for example, an active card may be something like faster reload. And let's say you know you choose a faster a faster reload card, and then um, you play the level and then you die, right? You'll come back to the beginning of that level and you'll get a chance to choose a new active card and you'll still have the previous active card. So these things stack, right? So eventually if you keep dying, uh, you know, all these stacked active cards should make it a little bit easier for you. But once again, you only have three continues. Um, in, th in this game, I believe the zombies are called Ridden. You know, in every one of these uh, zombie games, they always got to change the name of the zombies, but they're just zombie hordes, right? Uh, there's a store for ammo, items, gun attachments, and supplies at the beginning of every level. And you'll find money, which is copper, throughout the level. I believe when anyone in your squad finds money, you all get it, but you all spend it individually. I believe that's how it works. Uh, you can also heal your teammates if you have a bandage or a med kit. You could use it on yourself or you can use it on a team teammate. You can also give uh, your teammates uh, ammo. Um, friendly fire is active in this game. I don't know if it's like full friendly fire where uh, it, it does the full percentage of damage to teammates or if it's, uh, you know, a, a smaller percentage, but friendly fire is on. So you can't just be shooting all willy nilly with no consideration for your teammates or your teammates position. So if you're in a, you know, a, a small tight hallway, yeah, y'all all can't be just shooting anywhere at once because then you're going to be uh, causing damage uh, to your teammates. Some of the guns I've encountered are sniper, sniper rifles, automatic rifles, melee weapons, uh, pistols and shotguns. Um, and I, you know, I really like, as I said, I really enjoyed using all these different weapons. You can have one primary and one secondary weapon and, and a melee weapon, right? Because there are slots for all of these things. So you can't just have like an unlimited supply of like, uh, you know, items. And of course you can't just have a whole bunch of primaries. So I believe there's one item slot for an offensive, uh, item. A supportive item and then a melee weapon so uh, a supportive item might be an ammo uh, an, 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 an ammo box or a med kit an offensive item might be like a flashbang or a grenade and then you can have your melee weapon like a bat or a stun gun I believe it is some di so I believe the different enemy types um, are the common infected the the hawk the hawkers which are pretty much spitters the bruisers, those are the guys with the huge mutated arms and do melee damage. The wretch, which is like the big guy, he's like a cross between the hawker and the spitter. The snitch, you know, and his name, as his name implies, he will alert hordes to your locations. The birds also do this. The birds can get you in a lot of trouble in this game. So I don't believe the birds are actually infected, but if you approach the birds, you get too close to them. And a lot of times that will happen by accident because you might be running from a horde and you'll, you know, run into some birds. And then the birds will also cause a whole bunch of, uh, uh, a whole new horde on top of that to run at your location. So you got to be careful with that. And there are alarm systems in some of the levels uh, so if you open a door with an alarm system, that's also going to trigger the, ho the horde and, and you'll get a whole bunch of Ridden uh, running after you. And the last uh, zombie type that I know of is the ogre. That's the that's pretty much the giant brute. And this guy, uh, he pretty much he, he, he can spit. He can grab you. Yeah, that that dude's a that dude's a beast. Um and as far as like the visuals and the animations go, you know, th these type of games don't really go for, you know, the best in like visuals and animations. But I will say that this game, you know, visually it, it looks sharp. It looks OK. Uh, the animations in these type of games are probably like the least of their priority. Um, so obviously, you know, you don't play games for that. But I will say the game, uh, the game does look good. I, I was even impressed by the um, 
by the weapon, the details on the weapon, and like blood will be on the weapon, and like they'll turn it sideways, and and the reload an animation actually wasn't bad either. The movement animation, you know, is is pretty stiff. If you know, if I was going to be uh, you know, super uh, analytical about those things in this game. I'm not, but, you know, just putting it out there. So, yeah, those are some details about the game. Um, it's, a pre it's pretty straightforward. Once you play a few levels, uh, you kind of feel like you got the gist of how everything works. It's fun. You know, it's enjoyable. Um, I would say that I would, depending on when this game comes out, I would probably buy it day one. Not that, not buy it day one, as in like, oh man, I can't wait for back, back for Blood to come out. It's on like my top ten most anticipated games list. No, nothing like that. But it's one of those games where when it comes out, if there's nothing else to play, um, I would still get it if there are other things to play because I do find that the fun factor is there. Uh, but it's not something that I'm like, you know, it's going to be on my top 10 most anticipated games list or anything like that. And I do think it's going to scratch the itch for a lot of people who've been wanting like a Left 4 Dead 3, for example, because that's essentially uh, what this is. So, yeah, I think it's it's going to be solid. Um, it's it's I'm not sure if this game is going to be in Game Pass. You know, I know that's something old people always ask. Uh, I don't think I think this game can succeed without Game Pass. Uh, I think people will still pick it up anyway. I mean, if it isn't Game Pass, then then, then great for those people. Um, but if it's not, I I still think it's one of those games that's going to do uh, really well, um, especially over time. I think it's it's a game that's going to have legs, especially if they you just continue to support it. Uh, the mod community might go crazy, you know, with uh, Back for Blood as uh, they did with uh, Left for Dead Two and, and Left for Dead PC dudes was playing that five to ten years after it came out uh, because of the modding community so yeah I'm enjoying the game um, I think the beta is fun and uh, yeah I think it's solid so yeah those are my thoughts on the game um, those are my thoughts uh, you know I, I enjoy it I like it like I said it does suffer from some of the problems uh, of becoming kind of mundane and repetitive as other you know horror shooters do but you know they, they find ways to vary it in the level design and create, you know, some dynamic experiences. So, yeah, there's a, there's enough there to, to keep you uh, playing, I would say. So that's those are my impressions. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I upload a video. Follow me on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you'll think about Back for Blood based on what you've seen and if you've played it. All right. I'm out of here. I will catch y'all on the next video. Peace.